okay. Um, so good morning. Am I audible, Ventakesh? Yes, yes, you are out. Okay, and I I hope my screen is visible too. Okay, so let us start with the uh, daha. The double affine Hecke algebra always for GLM for us. That's the only case we are considering. Um, and the notation for that was HN tilde. And let me recall that definition, how it was defined. This was the group algebra of B uh, and tilde. This was the double affine Artem group that we defined uh, modulo the Hecke functions. And I'm I'm a little vague about the coefficient ring here. Um, we will later on uh, have a patient to be, um, play with, play with uh, what the coefficients are. So recall that D n tilde is uh, generated variously, or even presented, maybe even presented. Variously, we had three presentations at least. So one was the original thing was with T1, Tn minus one, S not, S not check, uh, Q, G, and G check. Okay, that was one set of. Uh, so there was this uh, S naught and T1 through Tn minus one like this. Similarly, S naught check. If you recall, and the conjugation by G will take it around cyclically here. The conjugation by G check will take it around cyclically by here. Q is centered. And, uh, yeah, maybe, and there were there were a little few more, uh, one, uh, one set more, which is, um, well, anyway, let's not, uh, we have seen this one. Okay. Two was, you could do this with X1, Tn minus one, S naught, Q, and a new set of generators, X1 through Xm. Okay. Now, and again, um, there were some um, relations here. We'll have a patient to use some of them later on. So at the, at the, right now, let me not belabor the point. We also had S not check Q Y1 Y2. Okay, this was another set of generators. And let us just recall the Hecke relations. These are for every Ti. So we have Ti minus T to the one half into Ti minus T to the minus one half is equal to zero. Let's uh, write it. That's, uh, it's good to keep writing this differently. So Ti square is equal to, if you send this to the other side, I hope I'm doing this right. Um, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is this. Um, Ti plus one. Or you could send this Ti to the other side and factor out a Ti. So Ti inverse, as you see, is Ti minus T to the one half minus T to the minus one half. Or you could send this Ti prime to the side and T one half minus T one half to the side and get Ti minus Ti inverse is equal to 
e to the one half minus e to the minus one half. Okay. Let me also remind you that the x size, um, the x1 to xn, the subgroup generated by this in the, you know in in the end tilde is isomorphic to z power n and therefore uh, the subalgebra generated by x1 plus minus xn plus minus in HN tilde is isomorphic to the polynomial ring, what, no, polynomial ring. Let me not write the coefficient ring. So the coefficient ring must have a t to the one half at plus minus. That is clear because I'm writing these relations. So polynomial, uh, sorry, Laurent polynomial ring. Polynomial ring. So what that means is some coefficients, so equal to coefficients, and then this x1 okay. so recall that x size are called the polynomial generators. This is just some terminology. And similarly, the yi's, the xi's and yi's are related by this duality, uh, check duality. Yi goes to xi goes to yi under the check duality. So they also form a large Abelian group, as uh, as Ram and uh, Go and Ram call it. Uh, and then these these are called Sherednik. Dunkel operators. And let's recall um, what we. Okay, now why are they operators? We'll come to a particular. So when we think of them as operators, we are thinking of a particular representation of this uh, Gaha. Um, but let's recall, it's useful to keep in mind the following. So let me phrase it exactly the way I phrased it last time. That the um, uh, McDonald polynomials are, are um, Uh, polynomials in the polynomial generators. So the notation for this E mu right? and so mu is in Zn. So for every mu, such mu, we are going to define an E mu and those will be polynomials in the excise in the polynomial generators and they will be there and uh, are polynomials and are simultaneous eigen vectors for the control for the for the CD operators. Now let me remind you also of uh, this um, the polynomial representation. Maybe I can go to the page. Uh, let, me, let me try this if this pairing works. Um, no, this is not going to help. Sorry.
So should I enlarge this? Uh, I guess this is better, right, uh, Venkatesh, uh, rather than presentation mode? Yeah, this is better. This is better. So, um, okay, so this, so let's do, so it's, consider the sub algebra. I will not even introduce a notation for it. Um, sub algebra generated by T1, Tn minus 1, G, and Q um, of H and theta. And then choose uh, Q and T to the 1 half in C such that one is not equal to q to the a t to the one half b for any uh, a comma b in z2 and last time i had left it out satish uh, thankfully pointed it for it. so the only value for which it is one is is this one okay. um, so, and then I consider one, this is the module for the sub-algebra. So, uh, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a one dimensional module over C, one dimensional, so dimension of one over C is one. So that um, PIs uh, act like T to the one half, where T to the one half is this uh, complex number. Q acts like Q. So this is an abuse of notation. I'm representing the generator by Q as well as the what it acts by also by Q. And uh, what else do I need to say? G acts as one. Well. Okay, so it's an easy check to uh, uh, see that this actually defines a module for this subalgebra. You can, for example, uh, the braid relations, uh, you know, T1, T2, T1 is equal to T2, T1, T2. That's obviously satisfied because everything goes to, all of these go to T1. Okay. Um, and so what, what uh, we do now is, this is the polynomial representation. So C X plus, so this is the notation, this is notation, if you wish. This is equal to, this is the definition, H and tilde tensor over the subalgebra of this one. Okay. And this is let's observe. So let's observe. Okay. So the reason for this is so let me write down some relations which we had uh, in the Hecke algebra which we have seen. So uh, and as Apurva was commenting last time, so uh, G, G. So there are these generators, right? So I'm going to see how these generators are going to. Um, Q is central, of course. Um, how, um, so if I have something like X1, mu1, Xn, mu n, this is in the Hecke algebra, then I this is equal to X2, mu2. We had done this last time. Xn, mu n minus 1, mu n minus 1. So, X, uh, X1, mu to the n. Should be x2 to the mu1. Sorry, x. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, thank you. x2 to the mu1. Thank you. xn to the mu n minus 1. 
x1 to the mu n, and then there is a q minus mu n g. So the point is this g will pass. So I, I'm trying to understand. Um, uh, uh, I'm claiming I'm going to claim that this is as a module over complex numbers. This is isomorphic to uh, this Laurent polynomial ring. In fact, as a module over the Laurent polynomial ring itself as well, right? As a module even over the Laurent polynomial ring itself. Correct. Exactly. Even as a even as a module over. Exactly. Right. Thanks, Dr. Um and so uh, you can figure out how the G and the TIs act by, by these relations, because I can keep this to this side and then transfer this G and uh, uh, Q to the other side, and I can figure it out. So we had done this last time. So let me just write this out. TI X mu is SI, X mu where XI is the simple reflection uh, and this has obvious meaning, uh, Ti plus T to the one half minus T to the minus one half by one minus Xi, Xi plus one inverse, one minus Si X mu, okay. where this means the following. So this one minus Si X mu, if you, uh, if you do it, so you're switching SI will switch XI and XI plus one. So you'll get something here, which is divisible by this. So you'll get some polynomial. Okay, so using this, uh, you can figure out how to, um, what this thing, this object, this polynomial representation, uh, this is the polynomial representation. Of the chandelier. So all the action of the Gaha. So this is the Gaha. So all the action um, happens there. So let me make a um, now a remark. Okay. Um, so there are these operators. So I, I want to now switch to the other set of generators, y1 through yn. The now these make sense as operators on this module. And then we call them the Sheridnik Dunkel operators. So uh, the claim is the yi act, so they commute and act semi simply on, uh, uh, on this. And so it makes sense to, as uh, once again, thanks to Apurva, as he was pointing out, they commute and they are act semi simply, therefore, uh, makes a natural sense to ask for a set of common eigenvectors for them. And the McDonald polynomials are precisely those. But the catch is that maybe this is not, uh, this is not obvious a priori. Not obvious. So, so it's sort of an inverted thing. It, you know, we do all the work and then the arguments come later. Um, okay. So now um, something new. Let me introduce the uh, intertwiners. Now you see this T1, Tn minus one G check. Um, um, so, for example, um, uh, there are these um, uh, the braid relations hold. So, I can, I can know, we can make sense of and a CG check. Let me also write CG check will take T1 to T2, T2, etc. So this goes like this. 
Um, so given any element of any element W of the symmetric group, which I denote like this, we can make sense of TW in B and tilde, right? Because as we know, uh, the well-known fact in which we've been using uh, is that any two reduced expressions are related by the braid relations and the braid relations hold in B and tilde. We have imposed those uh, relations and therefore uh, they hold in B and tilde, so this makes sense. So also in HN, okay? But what we now want to do is extend this uh, thing. So given, given any element of W of the, uh, in uh, Google Rams paper, this is just called a fine while group, but maybe it should be called, or it is otherwise also called the extend, extended a fine while group of CRM, um, which we know is this, this semi, uh, semi direct product and want to make sense of Uh, he, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I, I'll write tau check W, okay? Okay, so this is our goal. Yeah, um, I want to yes. uh, just, I mean, very curious, this may very well be completely wrong. So uh, these YNs are these, so some kind of operators, maybe some kind of difference or differential operators, uh, acting on this polynomial representation. Yes. Uh, I mean, there are, are operators. There are operators. Acting yes. on polynomials, so I presume some kind of differential, differential operators, but maybe not. Anyway, so. Uh, uh, no, let's see. Uh, uh, there are difference, difference operators. Difference operators. Difference operators. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, so then, uh, and would they, so if they acted on a polynomial, would they produce a polynomial? They couldn't go to negative degrees? Like, would it? That act? seems like uh, it. Uh, yes, 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 yeah. yes. Is that correct, Arun? So, so a priori, they could go to negative degrees and in other types they do, but in, in GLN, ah. uh, magically the degree is preserved. The degree, is, the degree of the polynomial is preserved, okay. Yeah. Okay. I was just uh, wondering. Yeah, I mean, not only the degrees preserved, uh, they don't go to something like x1 does not go to x2 square, x3 inverse, or something like that, right? More than that. And if, they, if there are no negative terms involved, then yeah, I guess the degree is also preserved. Is that correct, Arun? I mean, um, it's, it's more than saying degrees preserved, right? Uh, well, the, the degree in, inside the uh, I mean, uh, because I, I could uh, I could write something yes. like this and consider that also degree one. Uh, right. Yeah, no. Okay. okay. No, uh, but I think I don't say negative is not allowed or doesn't show up if you start with non-negative degree polynomials. If, if you start with non-negative degree, then it, then it stays non-negative degree, and and in fact yeah, the, stays, the, yeah. the, okay. The degrees, the degrees within the polynomial ring within the non-negative degrees are preserved. Right? Uh, okay, so so in that case, then I guess uh, in some sense, if we knew that, so we know they commute, and since the degrees are preserved, they do act on the graded pieces which are finite dimensional. Yes. Okay, so if we knew they were semi-simple, we could produce eigenvectors because there's finite dimensionality involved. And the field is algebraically closed. Yes. Okay, but we, we don't know it, and that's the one problem. Okay. I mean, the field is not, uh, oh, uh, the field is algebraically closed. Okay. Is, but, yeah. uh, but the eigenvalues turn out to be, okay. I mean, even if you take them to be, I guess, uh, just uh, take the one half as a variable, uh, it still works. Uh, so, ah, okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I'm happy we have our own. 
here because as I mentioned, I'm not much of an expert. Okay, so let us, so this is a digression on a fine multi. So for the next uh, 15 minutes or so, um, I will, we are just doing some group theory. Uh, so this is denoted W in uh, uh, go around, so I continue. So, uh, so extend our file while group is, uh, so the, we know this, I should say extend. So as we know, this is uh, ZN, uh, product. So let me just remind you of things here. Uh, so ZN is, uh, uh, I can think of it as Z like so, functions from N to, uh, this is by definition functions from N to Z. So I'm mentioning this because it's important. This this becomes important when you want to manipulate. Okay? And this is uh, an abelian group. And SN uh, is we think of that as bijections of N. And then therefore SN acts naturally on N. Um, and then there is an induced action because this is interpreted as functions from n to z, so induces an action on z n, uh, and this is by group automorphisms, and so z n semi direct product s n makes sense. Okay, now may realize this is true in general for any semitic product. Um, Zn cross uh, the semitic product within bijections of uh, Zn. Okay, so Zn maps to bijections of Zn by K Lee and Sn maps to auto automorphisms of Zn by by this we have said this and this is this is sitting inside this. So all this is very good. Okay. Now um I want to define so we want to define um, said we want to realize this is the key thing we want to realize this uh, Zn as uh, some uh, bijections on Z. Okay, not on Zn, but on Z. Okay. So for this purpose, I'm going to introduce the group SNPT. So this stands for N periodic uh, permutations. N periodic uh, permutations. Okay, and we are fixing an n bigger than or equal to. Um, so this is this this is by definition. So uh, let us get, I know jumping ahead. This will be this will be identified with this. Okay, the subgroup of bijections W of Z such that W I plus N is W I plus N. So what that means is 
W from the very definition is determined by what it does to W1, etc. Wn. So what it does to what it does to one through n, and therefore these are the values of w acting on one. So moreover, no two of these values, since this is a bijection, no two of these values are equal modulo n. Because given this condition. And given that it's a bijection, if uh, two of them were equal modulo n, you would get into trouble because you would, uh, it would not be a bijection. So conversely, given uh, these, meaning w1 through these values, such that No two of them are equal to are equal modulo n. W is determined. We can get a corresponding. Okay. So is this the same as an tilde? Uh -huh. Uh, sorry, what is A and tilde? I mean the affine uh, affinization of A n. Don't you? I think what is missing is that W one plus up to W n should be n choose two. Do, do you want to add that condition also? Sorry, I didn't. Uh, I didn't. N plus one choose two. Sorry. So uh, you want yeah. all, all the permutations. So W one up to W n can be all permutations of one through n. In addition, you can have negative numbers and compensating positive numbers, right? Is that what you want? Uh, I have this condition, that's all. Yeah, yeah. So that, that condition will determine uh, everything else if you give W1 up to W1. Correct, correct. Hmm. But in addition also, don't you want the, the sum? Is it, uh, I, all I want is that no two of these are more equal model. Okay, but um, so no, that extra condition is the difference between the extended affine bile group and the non extended affine bile group. Uh -huh. okay. If you put that extra condition, then you're looking at a smaller group which is uh -huh. not extended. Uh -huh. Okay, uh -huh. okay, now I got uh, now I get the question. So there is a subgroup here which is like which is generated by S0, S1. Uh, a, a, You know, yeah, S not yeah. S and minus one, yeah. right? And uh, that that is no this uh, yeah yeah now yeah there is an extra element we here which okay. uh, which okay. is not this so this subgroup this subgroup does not generate uh, this this is larger as a rule function. Thanks. So uh, um, S n um, is of course a subgroup of uh, is this obviously because I can just this is bijections on of n I just map them to and then I I use this to the you know from what we have said this defines this so you can also do z n is a subgroup of s n p so for mu in uh, uh, set n, so let's call this mu one to mu n. Um, I let t sub mu of j be j plus n mu j for j one to n. So I've multiplied the mu j by n and then shifted. So um, yeah, let me say more and it will become clear. So there is a map from Sn pp to Sn 
is W going to W bar, right? Where W bar is takes J going to, so J is one between one and n. Wj, which is an integer, but I take it modulo n, right? Modulo n, uh, uh, my representatives are one through n, correctly interpreted. So uh, kernel of this map is Zn. And so we have, uh, okay, if I'm, if I'm gonna write it like this, I'm writing zero here because it's a written additively. Uh, PP. And we have this onto map for SM to the one. And there is this, uh, this uh, the, the SN is a subgroup. So there's a map here splitting. Right. Okay, now, from this, you can see that SNPP can be identified with um, ZN, this semi direct product, which was our Okay, so we have, the, so uh, thus we have, thus we have W acting on Z. Okay, now let me. Sorry, I didn't that. understand the last statement. W acting on Z? Uh, because. Uh, Do you uh, mean W acting on ZN? Um, what is. No, uh, W is this. So th there is this action on. Um, this is a set of bijections. Oh, oh, I understand. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah no problem. Sorry, when you said Kaylee, that was just addition, right? Translation. Uh, translation, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the translation on any group. Yeah. Yeah. Is this okay? Any questions? Okay. So let I move now. There is an important element pi in SNPP and therefore in the Y group. Okay. And what is that? This is the obvious. So I is equal to. So this is definition i plus one for all i inside. So it's the shift. Okay. Now um, I claim claim uh, this is not very difficult to prove. Uh, this is generated by this element and S N. So, um, do I indicate a proof here? Okay, so so let me just write down a few things. If you do a calculation, pi is equal to P of one zero 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 times S one S two S one max. You can check this. So, which means this will belong to this subgroup generated by and SM. Okay. And then you have S1 uh, T1000 S1 is equal to P of 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay. So, so this, these two calculations will show, uh, so Zn, so belongs to the subgroup. And, okay. Now we come to the, what is relevant for us. We want to define the notion of length, okay? But I want to warn you, um, this length is, uh, so this is not uh, thought of as a toxic group, so that it's not the, uh, length as a positive group. So there are non-trivial elements whose length is zero. So length of an element um, W of W is defined as 
number of i comma j pairs i is between one and n. So I, I have these values. So let us think of let me draw a picture. So you have one through n here. And I, I only can, you know, I only need to look at these values, and these values determine W as we've seen. So I is I is like this. And as you as is usual with inversions, I look for a position which is bigger than J a position. So if I is somewhere here, is one of these positions, J I scan beyond I. Okay. So the J could be in Z anywhere. So it could be, it need not be within N. And I must see that wi is bigger than wj. So if I see a number here that is bigger than the number here, or even here, then I consider it an inversion. Okay. So a length of uh, pi is zero because uh, what I see here is two, three, four, four, n plus one. Etc. It just keeps on going. There are no inversions. Okay. Um, so the comment comment here is this notion of length uh, length reduces to the notion to the Coxeter notion on uh, S N. And even on and here, uh, uh, Arvind. So even on the group that you were considering, right? So these are fairly easy to see. Okay. So let me pause here and ask you if you have any questions. So this finishes the digression almost. Um, so we have an action of the extended affine while group on Z. That is the point. So, and using that, I have defined the length. Yes, yeah, sir. sir. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, go ahead. Uh, you maybe said it, uh, you said something that uh, this is not a coxeter group, this uh, extended uh, fellow? Uh, oh. No, I guess not. I don't know if they, uh, if it can be in some strange way made into a coxeter group. Uh, I don't know. But uh, but uh, no, it's not a coxeter group. It's not a coxeter. Group. Okay. Okay. So that means I mean it can't even be made into a coxeter. Group. You're saying in some strange way. I don't think so. Okay. okay. Is That's there okay. any obvious reason why it is not? Uh, somehow it's because of this length zero thing that mm. many. If you actually have a Coxeter group, then every element will have some length. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I guess here the identity also has length zero, and so does this. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There are quite a few which have length. Uh, yes. Any any uh, any translation like this will have. Uh, yeah. Pi to the n will have. Any power. Yeah. Okay. So what is uh, what is s not in this? Ah. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, s you can define actually s j. Okay, so let me define this. Sj um, of i is equal to, so this is definition, um, i plus one if i is congruent to j mod n and i minus one if i is congruent to j plus one. Um, so that's my definition of SD. Yes. And there are nice relations with like uh, pi SI pi inverse is SI plus one. I hope I got this right, but you can easily check this. Okay. So, uh, it's gone. So the here the thing is um, so a reduced word. Now I'm going to define a reduced word. A reduced word for W in W is um, 
is an expression for expression of the form w is equal to si1 sik where s so i1 through ik take values in um, 1 through n minus 1 or they could also be pi or pi inverse uh, this is left out in the paper but strictly speaking it should be there i think maybe for elements that we that are actually considered maybe this pi inverse does not uh, come at all but uh, in the definition i feel it should be there uh, is that correct uh, Arun? yes i think you're right yes yeah. such that uh, length of w as defined above is the length of si1 plus dot 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 plus Okay, I, of course, I have to say so s sub pi is def just defined to be pi, s sub pi inverse is defined to be pi. Inverse. Okay, um, and the, the thing is, any, um, any two reduced words are related by. Um, um, are related by braid, uh, braid and other obvious relations. Um, so, for, for, uh, okay, so what are these? What I mean by the other obvious relations are pi, pi inverse, is one pi inverse pi and pi si okay i seem to have brought that right earlier yes. for here we only need to consider this for less than less than so less than n minus one because here i have an address so, uh, so uh, let's not get into the very details of this, but the idea is should be clear. Now, once you you know it is similar to the way we define T W in the for W in the say S N when I have the braid, right? Because if I have a reduced expression, any two reduced expressions are related by the braid relations, uh, and therefore, it, uh, although the square of these operators need not be one. Uh, I can nevertheless think of an operator indexed by W. Okay, so here is the key uh, takeaway from uh, all this digression. So if we have operators tau one check, tau n minus one check, and tau pi check, uh, which satisfy The, the braid relations. When you say operators, you mean on that polynomial representation? Uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah, at the moment, just let it wash over you, it will become okay. clear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which satisfy the, uh, these relations, let me say, these relations. Then tau w check. Uh, I, these checks just come along for the right, so they are just decoration. I guess uh, it is in the you know it's for some consistency with other uh, notation. So you know they play. There is always a check. Uh, makes sense for w. Okay, and so we have. These are the key. Now, I put that equal to G check. Okay. Now I'm thinking of operators on the polynomial representation that we had. 
Okay, and then tau I check to be Ti uh, plus E minus one half. So there is a scalar on top. And in the bottom, there is a, there is this operator. Now, um, what do these mean? Right. So, uh, so the the way I am thinking of them is that this thing, this one. So this is a scalar on top. So it commutes with everything. So remember, we are in a non-commutative algebra. So we need, you know, we cannot just write uh, the inverses or uh, etc. carelessly. So this is a scalar one. So the top is uh, all right. And so this stands for just the inverse of this operator. Right. So, but it is uh, uh, suggestive and convenient to write it like so. Right. It, it uh, makes for a very convenient calculus. Okay. So now the claim. Sorry. Uh, yes. I, I just want to clarify what do you mean by the tau I had uh, tau I check satisfying these relations when, when you said these. I meant uh, the sorry, I'm having difficulty. Okay, let me. Oh, oh God. Uh, it's a page four or five. These meaning these relations. So oh. see, there is a pi, there is, a, see, there is a pi huh. and there is an S1 to SN, SN minus one. Yeah. And there are certain relations. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, the point is mm -hmm. any two reduced words are related only by those relations. Okay. So, okay? Mm -hmm. and whatever those relations are, those must be satisfied by certain. See, here also I have a set of operators indexed by. So the tau one check corresponds to S1, tau n minus one check corresponds to SN minus one. And yeah. there is something corresponding to tau. Okay. And also pi inverse, I presume? Uh, also pi inverse. Okay, let's put a pi inverse. So also. that's the same thing, is it? Yeah. Uh, which, is the, which is the inverse of this operator because, okay. because of this. Okay. Okay. okay, I've been a little uh, careless here because the uh, paper does not consider pi inverse at all. So it's a, there's a bit of, uh, uh, huh. uh, you know. Okay, but uh, uh, just, to, so I just, yeah. the tau I, so uh, the tau I uh, checks and tau pi check to satisfy the braid relations and these extra relations that you have just written below. No, no, no. These are not relations. These are the definitions. No, 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 no. The huh. pi, pi, si, pi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct, correct, correct. These, so, yeah, these, yeah, correct. There, yes. I should interpret pi as tau pi check? Yes, and pi inverse as the inverse of that operator. Okay, okay. And if these relations are satisfied, then you say that they act on uh, this uh, polynomial. Then this operator will make sense. Uh, for any, okay, okay. Uh, for on any, the polynomial ring that you just defined. Right. right. A lot of on the, yes. On okay. the, so this may so this is a general comment, right? Huh. And this is now I'm applying it to the polynomial representation. Okay, okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thank these you. are not the definitions though. The, these are the de these are now uh, definitions. Yeah. So I'm letting Tau pi, I'm putting tau pi check is equal to g check, and right. tau i check is equal to this operator. Right? Note that all these are operators, all these are elements in H and tilde. Right? Although I'm writing this in the bottom, and that the explanation I gave that, you know, this this as an operator is invertible, and what I mean is the inverse of this operator. Right. right. And yeah. Uh, uh, because they satisfy the same relations upstairs, do you get some homomorphism from WFI or something? 
yeah in fact from in fact from uh, the uh, braid group of the affine wild group from the braid group of the affine wild group uh, corresponding braid group as well yeah to to some subgroup of the multiplicative of, of units in H and of invertible elements in H and So they uh, you you um, on on the polynomial representation. So so this uh, uh, let me say B n tilde right braid group. Um, uh, these are all elements in the endomorphism ring of the polynomial representation. I mean in the image of H and tilde in the endomorphism ring of the polynomial. Like, uh, are the tau I check for instance genuinely in H and tilde or, or is its image as operators on the polynomial representation? Maybe that's ah, so I don't know. I don't know if they are in H and tilde. Ah, okay. I don't know. So no, uh, they, are, uh, they are not in H and tilde unless you extend H and tilde by okay. allowing rational functions in the Y's. Right. Okay. For some formal sense. Or something. Okay, fine. Yeah. But if they are in the image of the. Okay, fine. Yeah. Yes. So they are uh, just um, operators on the polynomial representation. Okay. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, it's right. That's right. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let me just say moreover. So there are these things when, when we can check. Yi TW check will be TW check y w inverse i okay so these are now the i is an integer and what i mean by that is uh, let me explain that for w in w which is smpp and i in z but i need some calculatory here because i i have meaning of this for one to n but for any integer, I put y j plus n is equal to q y j for uh, j in z. Okay, this condition defines this y i sign. I have this and um, yeah. Okay, so now. Uh, let me now finally finish the okay. So given mu in Z, right? I write T mu. This is in SMPP is as u mu times v mu with v mu in SM such that u mu is the elements of least length. Length as defined above in the coset of E mu uh, S. So, if I, what I mean is, so T mu is an element, right? And think of it as a, uh, you know, think of it as its action on Z, and therefore it, there is a notion of length. And then if I multiply on the right by certain elements of Sn, its length may decrease. And in fact, it's not very hard to show that there is one element of least length in this coset. And now you define E mu, this is the climax, is to be T to the minus half length of V mu inverse. Uh, I don't understand why this inverse, uh, Aruna, in your paper, you keep writing this inverse. Why do you do that? Uh, 
Uh, am I audible? Yes. Uh, yes, you are audible, but Arun doesn't seem to be online. Uh, online. Oh. So I, I don't know. I mean, I could have written we knew here. Right? I, they keep writing consistently we knew in verse. So, so this is the um, this is the this is for z bigger equals zero. Right. Thanks. So mu is in z. Yeah. So I've written it. Let's. Uh, oh, sorry. Mu in z. N. Okay. Huh, that was what my choice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that. Okay. So, uh, I mean, uh, I understand we have not unpacked this, but uh, so this operator makes sense as an element because this u mu is an element of this SMP. That's the whole point. That's, what, that's the extra bit that we have done today. And there is this notion of length, and you have this. And uh, you have some two results here. So uh, then yi e mu, right? So we claim that it is a, these are eigenvectors for these Dunkel Sharadnik operators, right? That is q to the mu i times t to the minus. So it, it, all this looks messy, but uh, once you get the hang of it, which I'm only beginning to. Uh, e for um, one less than equal to i less than. And so this is one statement. The second statement is the coefficient of x mu in e mu is one. So what we mean is that when you work this out, this operator, you uh, work this out. I mean, remember t is some complex number if you wish, or you can keep that as a variable uh, also. Um, and so this is some you know expansion in a priori in the in the Laurent polynomial ring, but as Tarun tells us, this actually works out to be in the polynomial ring itself. And there are these two statements. Okay, I had a bunch of calculations uh, um, that I could have illustrated some of these, not all of them, but I guess I am already over time. So um, I hope uh, I can hand over the baton to Vishwanath and let him clear up the mess that I have created. Thank you. I had a question. So Arun had said that uh, I think that mu that these vectors can be defined or exist even for mu in z to the n, not just z bigger equal zero to the n. Yeah, yeah, that correct, correct. The formula correct. That, or does, correct, correct. Yeah. Is there a similar slash similarly? Uh, so I, I I don't want to commit. So that I will try to answer your question sometime later. So I, I remember this question you had asked earlier also. Um, if is Arun back? He looks to be back. Okay, so he's there. So Arun, uh, yeah, it, it works. It, though the uh, thing which has to be done is to write down u mu for for mu in a, an arbitrary n tuple. Right. I mean, the way it is set up, you knew you could write this pi inverse pi, everything has an expression and you can just take that definition, right? Is that, will that work or will that not work? Uh, this definition that you have given the element of least length in ah. this process, that will work for arbitrary. Ah, uh, that will work. That okay. And somehow, uh, maybe 
again so the same kind of properties again hold that even on words with negative degrees some of the total degrees maintained or i mean i'm just i'm just trying to sort of wonder uh, okay so once you ah okay is it somehow then true that you so once you have the emus for all mu in z to the n not just z plus to the n then you can get the semi simplicity of the ys because you get a basis of the entire laurent polynomial ring something like that uh, you can do it either way so so much more natural is to do it for z, z to the n right but historically because of uh, the way symmetric functions is historically done you always worked with z greater than or equal to 0 to the n okay so if you want to draw combinatorics of boxes then it's more convenient to work with z greater than or equal to zero to the n, right. and and restrict just to positive polynomials. But then you would get that the yi's are uh, positive only on the polynomial subring of the polynomial representation. It's a semi simple. The yi's well, they're positive. The yi's are well defined and and have good eigenvalues on on the whole z to the n. And they are exactly the same if you restrict to the z greater than or equal to zero to the end. Thanks. Any more questions or comments? Uh, if we uh, like, can we somehow uh, specialize this to? Uh, so, if I take Q equal to T here, do I get a non-symmetric Schur polynomial? Sorry, Aditya, your voice broke. Could you repeat? Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I mean uh, uh, that uh, if you put Q equal to T here, then do you get a non-symmetric Schur polynomial? Yeah, it's, it's a very good question. You get something, uh, whether, whether it, I mean, I don't know what is, what does one have to have in order to deserve the name non-symmetric Schur polynomials? But you get something which is very, quite interesting, yes. Yeah, okay. So what does it mean, non-symmetric Schur polynomial? Yeah, I also don't know, but, uh, but uh, meaning, uh, so from these emus, you somehow uh, get those p mu's, right? I uh, guess because this is called the non symmetric Pitman Lord polynomial. I guess that was yeah. the reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So from there, uh, we can apply some symmetrization process to get uh, four polynomials or not. That is. I guess one interpretation could be that uh, the Schubert polynomials generalize the Schubert polynomials and they are non-symmetric. So uh, is there some relation when Q equal to T for these guys with, uh, with Schubert polynomials? That could, be, that could be one interpretation of this question. Yes, yes, there is. So E, e mu zero zero is huh. a Schubert polynomial. Or, uh, or no, no, is a um, is a key polynomial. What do you call it? Demazur yeah, polynomial, yeah, key polynomial, a key yeah, polynomial. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. But E zero zero is not the same as E T T, <laughs> which is the question that yeah, yeah. Uh, was being asked. <laughs> Uh, so, are there um, theorems, uh, you know, about those that exist for multiplications of Schubert, polynom uh, Schubert polynomials? Are they also for uh, e mu e mu's? Um, 
I mean, though, what does those that exist mean? Uh, meaning, of course, we don't know how to multiply them in general, right? but uh, maybe some special cases are known. Uh, meaning, uh, uh, you mean so structure constants? Or? I guess, do we know um, how to multiply McDonald's polynomial system? That's the question. I, other, but since they specialize to Schubert and we don't know how to multiply Schubert's, the answer is no, I guess. Uh, I was just wondering if there is something. Yeah, in general, the answer is no, no uh, but, uh, but in some special, very special cases, the answer is known, mm -hmm. uh, but it's probably not quite as advanced as the answers that are known for Schubert polynomials. So Arun, I have a question for you. <laughs> I was looking through your notes and I saw that one of you have named one of your statistics as COVID. Was that uh, deliberate? <laughs> or did you, was it just a kind of... Uh... Yeah, I guess it's deliberate. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's essentially the same as co-inversions, ah, okay. but I don't like co-inversions. Either, either as a name or as a statistic. <laughs> <laughs> so you call it COVID. Okay. okay, this is uh, Raghavan's last lecture. So let's uh, thank him for all the wonderful lectures. Uh, thank you. I <laughs> I've left for, uh, maybe left a mess for Vishwanath to clear up. No, no, it's very thanks for the questions and uh, thanks to, you know, uh, I could only do this because, uh, or made as bold enough to do this with, with Arun on board. Yeah, otherwise, uh, <laughs> I would be at sea. Okay, I'll stop recording. <laughs>